A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. I wonder what you might think about what God has to do with owning your own home. Well, our next guest is a former Queensland senator and he is a Presbyterian minister. He's presently on a tour of Australia. He's driving his van that he lives in and stops at towns and cities to deliver a message that he says concerns all of us. His main focus is on what the government is doing to our homeland titles. Former Senator Len Harris, his hometown is in Mareeba, he's been travelling around Victoria and he's joining us to talk through this issue. Len, a special welcome along to 2020. Uh, Good and look, absolutely blessed to be there. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Len, you're on a campaign to assure property owners and to wake up the community to the fact that they may not actually own their property. What's the essence of what you're saying? Well, well, Neil, they absolutely do own their own property. There, There is no doubt about that whatsoever. Where the doubt comes in uh, is that now currently right around Australia in every other state and territory no one that absolutely no one has any legal document that they can hold in their hand to prove they own their property. Okay so this is an ownership issue so home ownership proof you're saying that none of us have that. If we have a home, there is no proof of ownership. I imagine it's just a data entry on a big computer server. Yes, you you are absolutely correct. And it, it's quite a, a shock for people to be confronted with this. And in actuality, all of the states and the two territories the Northern Territory and also the Australian Capital Territory, they have all abrogated their duty as government. Each of the states, and I'll just quickly run around them, uh, Victoria cancelled all certificates of title in 2016. South Australia cancelled all their certificates of title in 2017. Queensland, my home state, cancelled ours in 2019. New South Wales cancelled all certificates of title in 2021. And Western Australia cancelled all of their certificates of title in 2020. 23. The only state that is still muddling and dithering around is Tasmania, and I believe, but haven't had um, confirmation, that Tasmania will cancel their certificates of title later this year. So when I'm talking about certificates of title, not only are they the just the uh, pieces of paper that Queensland and a lot of the other states uh, have been issuing for quite some time? We're also talking about those beautiful old parchment documents uh, that have the the correct crown insignia on it, which is the lion and the unicorn. And so it's quite an ask for people to be able to uh, sort of grab that and comprehend it because it's the very people that we have elected as government uh, who are the people who are cancelling our documents that prove we own our homes. 
And now let me just take this. Uh, you are now going to be taking the Queensland government to the Queensland Supreme Court. Uh, you uncovered amendments that were made to the Queensland Land Act of 1994 to make all home ownership documents and property deeds void and worthless. Uh, what's the process there? You're taking the Queensland government to the court. Well, in, Neil, actually, when I did that, uh, I was not aware. I, I thought this was just a rogue Queensland government stepping out uh, by themselves. Well, unfortunately, the the more research I did, the more worried I became. And initially, I had to end up withdrawing uh, that court case against the state of Queensland. So I didn't make a precedent uh, that nobody else in any of the other states could have challenged their state legislation either. So that that cost me at that point in time thirty thousand dollars to back out of that. However, I'm pleased I did because what we are doing now is actually going right to the actual source of power of our title, and that is the House of Commons in London, England, who have the power to actually rectify what all of our governments have done to us. We the people, under God. Okay, so you've approached uh, UK government uh, to have some influence over where our Queensland, uh, all of our state governments are actually uh, at with this particular issue around uh, land titles. Hey, uh, that's it's difficult to be able to comprehend. Um, at the beginning of our conversation, you said, well, yes, we definitely do have ownership. Uh, so how does this all work uh, as something that is taking away our ownership? It's not actually taking away your, our ownership at this point in time. Always in the back of my mind is uh, uh, Klaus uh, saying, in, by 2030, uh, you will own nothing and be happy. Well, uh, you know, that is a real worry. So that idea of an international reset and uh, Klaus Schwab and the uh, World Economic Forum, uh, that's something that you're saying, well, if that's true what they're saying, keep an eye on the ownership of your property titles. Hey, let's call on your uh, skills as an Presbyterian minister here for a moment. Um, when we talk about home ownership, property ownership, we're relying here uh, for our Western civilization, going back to the Ten Commandments, the Eighth Commandment says, Thou shalt not steal. And that has all sorts of implications because it says if you shouldn't steal, it means you at least own something. So you can own things. Mm. Uh, what's your reflection on uh, the Ten Commandments and thou shalt not steal and how that might work around the possibilities of uh, governments trying to take away your home ownership? Well, in, in actuality... Uh, I agree with exactly what you're saying, uh, and and primarily, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So the people who are challenging our, our right uh, to live in our homes with peace uh, and comfort, they they are actually, as you said, stealing our right. What we have in Australia currently at the moment is a government that is a corporation. And there's no need to run off to uh, the United States or Europe to, and, and then tell people, oh, well, they're registered over there. Yes, they are, because every, other, every government within the whole of the world are registered over there. What is not known widely by people is that a government that starts trading in currency, so not only is our federal government trading in currency, 
so individually are all of the states. When they actually start trading in currency, they lose their sovereignty. In other words, they just become another corporation in the world. So when we are being governed by a corporation, we only get privileges and we only get the privileges they allow us to have. Whereas if we go back to over 800 years of solid safety in being able to hold either a parchment or a paper title in our hand, but definitively, not only does it prove it's yours, right? it actually has that 800 uh, years of, of solid foundation under it. Well, Len, I think listeners can hear you're sounding an alarm bell here. And uh, for context, uh, when you served as a senator, that was under One Nation, Pauline Hanson's One Nation, uh, and uh, I'm understanding that she's describing uh, Labor's housing policies as something that would fulfil the World Economic Forum's Great Reset. Uh, so uh, those sorts of things that some say are a conspiracy, do you think they are a real threat to us? Well, well, let's um, sort of settle a couple of things. One, One Nation and myself uh, parted ways uh, when Pauline... Um, um, opposed me uh, as a senator. Um, this is back in 2003. So I'm, I'm no longer associated with One Nation or any of their policies. But that, that's not where the problem lies. The, the problem lies in that our government... Now, this seems strange... Probably we shouldn't call them government. We should only refer to them as corporations because that's what they are. The corporations, not only have they stepped outside of the constitution of the Commonwealth of Australia, they have actually stepped outside of their parliaments. Barry Farrell, back in 2012, copied a Canadian piece of legislation relating to the digitising of property uh, transactions. He took that New South Wales Act to an entity called COAG, the Coalition of Australian Governments, in 2012. And by 2013, without even consulting their cabinets, let alone their parliaments, all of the premiers and the two chief executive officers of the Northern Territory and the Australian Capital Territory all agreed to accept this New South Wales Act as their own state legislation, knowing fully two things. The first one was that that act had not been um, passed through any of their parliaments other than New South Wales, and also the fact that every other state and, and the two territories could not alter it. So, uh, say in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia, West Australia, Tasmania, all of the people who have purchased properties since uh, 2016, at least, um, that the, the state that they live in, not only have they actually effectively passed legislation, they can't, par they can't alter the legislation that they're operating on because it isn't there. Well, Len, uh, there is food for thought and uh, something perhaps to keep a closer eye on as things develop over these coming years. Former Senator Len Harris, uh, thanks so much for your time. Uh, Mariba is Len's hometown. He's been 
travelling around Victoria and uh, sounding an alarm bell. The website address is thesilentmajority.au and there's a petition there you can sign. Len's looking for 100,000 signatures uh, to be able to force the hand of the House of Commons in the UK to take that action here in Australia. The silent majority dot AU. Len, thanks so much for updating us today on 2020. Neil, any time you like, and God blessings to yourself and all associated with 2020. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.